Hallelujah. Blessed day to everyone in the precious name of Jesus. It's a great joy to be here online again. And I believe that you are doing fine, my viewers, wherever you are. And uh, the word of God that you will receive today, I believe it shall be a blessing to you and to your family. Whatever may be your situation, whatever circumstances around, trust God. As this word of God is coming to your life, you shall be blessed in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, without wasting time, I would like us to quickly move straight to the message so that uh, you can see what God has prepared for you. It's another fresh manna from heaven. Hallelujah. And I'm excited to deliver by the grace of God. You might have seen it on the screen, which I tell you that this is to manifest the glory of God. This shall lead to the glory of God. What do I mean by that? When I say this is to bring forth God's glory, is to manifest God's glory. For you to get what I'm trying to say very well, let's quickly move to the book of John chapter 9. That's where we will pick our test message from. And then from there we can continue and learn and learn by the grace of the Holy Spirit. Let's quickly read John chapter 9. Then I'll read verse 1 of the chapter. And the Bible says, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. He was blind. Not when he was five years old, six years old, ten years old. No. The Bible says this man was blind when even from the mother's womb. So somehow the disciples of the Lord Jesus were so astonished that what's going on here? Look at verse 2. And his disciple asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parent that he was born blind? They were surprised. How come this guy was born blind? Even before his arrival in this world, when he was still in the womb, he doesn't offend anybody. I'm sure he doesn't have any idea of anything in the world yet. How come? Does his father or mother commit a sin that make this boy to become blind? Or does he himself commit a sin that make him deserve this? So they were surprised. And Jesus Answer them a word that I love so much, which I love to call your attention to today by the grace of God. Let's look at verse 3. And Jesus answered, Neither had this man seen, nor his parent, that is, both of them, doesn't commit anything. It's not about their sin. They didn't commit the sin. He said, but that the works of God, the works of God, you can see that word is plural. The works of God. So it's, it's not just going to be only one work that God wants to bring out there. It's a, for the works of God should be made manifest in him. Hallelujah. What a good God. In every situation in life, God has a plan and purpose beyond human reasoning. They were just moving. They were wondering. How come is this man? We know this man. Even since younger age, this man has been blind. What happened to him? In some situation in life, somehow you yourself 
Must have been looking at some of the problems, challenges in life and think, why am I passing through this kind of situation? Is that how great is my sin? Is that great? Those, my fault in the past, are they, those fault are still in that in me? Somehow you might have asked for forgiveness of the sin of yourself, sin of your parents, sin of your relative, sin of your sh children. You know, the one you know and the one you don't even know. But yet, it seems nothing happened, nothing changed, everything continued the way it's up, the contrary. And you say, oh, I'm tired of this. Is that how bad I am? No. God is a good God. For everything God do it, there is a purpose for it. God will never allow anything without a reason. Just the same way the disciples were wondering what happened to this guy. Asking Jesus. But Jesus as a human in a, I mean, in, as a God in human's likeness, he understood everything. He knew it. So he was able to tell them that this is not just because of the sin of the parent, not because of the sin of this guy, but because God wants to manifest something glorious. Listen to me, my viewers, wherever you are, what you are passing through presently is because God wants to do great and mighty things in your life. Don't misquote me. That doesn't mean, mean that... You might not have got some mistake. We are all human beings. As long as someone is a human being, probably there might be some mistake in the past. You might have committed some sin. But God is still a merciful God. He loves you. He doesn't hold anger. So when your situation manifests in a way that seems contrary to you, don't keep a loud devil to use that to condemn you. Don't keep allow the devil to tell you that, oh, I know this, my sickness is a punishment of my past sin. I know I'm suffering this. I know I'm going to die in this because I have made a mistake in the past. Even your mistake can never stop the doing of God. It's a good God. He has forgiven you. Even since the first day you say, Lord, I am sorry. He will forgive you. He's a good God. So therefore, your understanding, your perspective must, you know, change. You must understand that there are some things that God allowed because he wants to bring forth greater glory after. He wants to glorify you. You want to do something glorious at the end for you. They look at that man. It's wonderful. What happened? How come? And Jesus said, this happened. God allowed this to happen to him. Because there are doings of God that is going to manifest about him. This guy we are talking about in John chapter 9. If you observe very well in the Bible, this has been one of the great testimonies of miracle in ministry of our Master Jesus. It's a kind of testimony that, that even make the whole land to be surprised to the extent that even the Pharisees, they were wondering, they are monitoring the boy. Where is him? He got healed. He was born blind. Even the doctors of that, those days, they will be confused. So when God wants to do something amazing in your life, when God wants to do something in your life that will surprise you, that will surprise the people around you, somehow it can first be as if you are, you are passing through something you don't, you don't deserve, a kind of punishment or a kind of challenge. But that doesn't mean God is punished you. 
I have said it on this platform often and often. Everything called evil that you see that happened to human beings or challenges or problems is a work of the devil. But somehow, God can permit it so that his glory will manifest at the end. So that at the end, it will prove how great it is in your life. It will become a testimony for the glory of his name. So whatever you might be passing through right now, I'm glad to tell you, this is not to destroy you. That which you are passing through is not to finish you. Don't mind any devil that may be saying, I will finish you. You have done. You cannot succeed anymore. Your business has gone. You have lost your capital. You have lost your you know, husband or you have lost your wife. You have lost the... All those things is to bring forth the glory of God at the end. That's what the Lord is saying. That person who broke away from you, that person who disappoints you, that one who promised and failed, it's not the end of you. It's all going to lead to the glory of God at the end. It doesn't matter how long that sickness has been there. You need to understand that God is working something. God wants to resort it into something. Let me quickly show you some other illustration in the Bible so that you can get what I'm trying to talk about. Just imagine about my favorite man in the Bible called Joseph. Hallelujah. Imagine with the kind of the vision and greatness of, uh, you know, destiny, God packaging him. His life seems from one problem to another, another problem to another, another problem to another. It's all in your Bible. If you read from Genesis chapter 37, imagine. He has a very good heart. He doesn't commit sin against anybody. He's a righteous person. But he suffered a lot. Now, he was just going, he was just going to, to assist the brethren, to assist his brother, carry their food. My brother, I'm here with your food. Oh, what do you expect? He's supposed to say, oh, this is our brother. Thank you for being our errand boys. We appreciate you. But immediately they saw him coming. The Bible says, they reasoned together within themselves and say, that is the dreamer. That is the boy that said that he has a big destiny. Let us kill him now so that nothing will come out of his life. Sometimes when you have a great tomorrow, when the glory of God is to manifest in your life after, don't ever expect that everybody around you will totally understand what God wants to do for you. There may be many who will even be there to frustrate you. There may be many who will even be there to against you. But it will all lead to the glory of God at the end. They didn't stop there. They put him in the pit. They said, let's put him here. He's going to die here. After that, another one said, Okay, don't let us put him here. Let us bring him out. And let us sell this boy so that nothing will come out of him. Imagine that. He said, let us sell him so that nothing will come out of him. Now, imagine from his father's house, suddenly he was being sold for a small amount of money to the people that he never knew before, people that he never speak the language before. He doesn't know how to express himself. He's just following them as if an animal was being sold. Imagine that. But yet, it's for God's glory. Just think about if Joseph haven't been sown to the land of Egypt, it can never become a prime minister of the country. 
It can never be so successful in the country. Sometimes God allows some problems, some challenges to push you here, push you there, push you there. It's pushing you closer to what God is planning for your life. The challenge that push you from your hometown and it is push you even to another place and it move you to another place a, a place that you don't even know you don't imagine you can't imagine that you will be there but suddenly you find yourself there and you start a new life again looking for a new friend new relationship is because God is making everything for your glory to manifest. Just imagine that if Joseph remained with his brothers, he will never become a great person that will rescue the entire nation. God is a good God. Everything you are passing through now, he knew why he allowed it. When you pray so hard, Lord, provide money for this, my house rent. I don't, I need it. And the landlord say, if I meet you here tomorrow, you're in trouble. You must get out of this place. And you don't, you don't even have any solution to it. You don't know what to do. You pray and it's says, God doesn't answer. Because if he answer, you will remain where he doesn't want, where you cannot meet your glory to manifest. So he allowed that landlord to push you and push you and push you so that you can move to where you are going. When you lose that job and you say, God, why this happened to me? God, is that how great my sin? I'm paying my tithe and offering. I'm doing everything to please you. Why you allow this? <laughs> His way is higher than your way. He allow it so that you can have your own company very soon. He has prepared greater blessings for you. He has prepared better level for you. Don't forget, the message is, this happened so that the glory of God can manifest. And imagine yourself in his journey. Even after he got to the house of his master, the wife of the master lied against him. No one to defend him. I can imagine him in the court when the judges, when they're asking questions, do you have any, anything to say? Do you want to defend yourself? He doesn't understand the language of their land so much. He cannot even express himself well. He said, this boy must be a criminal. This one is a criminal. Put him in the prison. <laughs> I, mean, I can imagine Joseph look up and say, God, from the pit to the Potiphar house, from the Potiphar house to the prison. But remember, it's not stopped there. It doesn't end there. It's 4P. P, 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 P. 4 from the pit to the Potiphar house, from the Potiphar house to the prison, from the prison to the palace. So when you are passing through your own challenges, when you are experiencing some things that you are not so happy about it now, it's for God's glory to manifest at the end. You may be passing through your own PPP already. You might be praying, you might be crying, God! Let it hang now. Do something now. Don't forget, the final one is waiting. Where you are going to be glorified. He got to that palace. He became a king. I mean, the next to the king, the fights of the whole country. Not only that, he got a wonderful emergency wedding. Everything turned to glory. Until the entire Egypt. The Bible says he paid, he bought the entire Egypt. Imagine, the whole country. There are some of you hearing me right now that your glory is going to be a blessing to many nations around the world. Many cities will be blessed because of you. 
Many people, thousands, millions of people will praise God because of your life. And that is why you don't have many people now. That is why some people who are around you now, they are people who always condemn you, who always judge you, who always mock you. That's why some people around you now, it seems they hate you. Because God is preparing you for your greatness. Don't forget the message is this shall lead to the manifestation of God's glory. Well, let me quickly say this before we round up. Remember, when they invited Jesus, our Savior, concerning the man, his friend, called Lazarus, according to the book of John chapter 11, when you read verse 4 of the chapter. Come on, Master, your friend is your friend. You love him. We know that you love him so much. He's sick. Please do something now. What does he say in verse 4? When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but this is for glory of God, so that the Son of Man can be glorified. There are some things that God allowed in your life now, so that your glory will manifest. There are some things you are passing through now. You yourself don't like it. You yourself, you are you almost blame God. God, why you allow me to pass through this? God, why this is... Wait a moment. Wait a moment. You don't see what he's doing. He's doing something behind in order to glorify you. He's allowing all those battles here and there, different kind of attack, just to push you to where God is taking you to. Don't be wary. Never lose your trust in God. The conclusion of my message is, let it ever set you in your mind that God is good towards you. Always believe it. When people mock you, when it seems you have been put to shame, always remember, God is good towards you. When that man you trust, you think that, oh, this will be my husband forever, disappoint you. Always remember, God is good towards you. When the doctor gave you a kind of report that makes you to cry, always remember that God is good towards you. It's just to bring out the glory of God at the end. Even when you are totally confused, when you don't understand what is going on, remember God is good towards you. He's a good God. He loves you. You understand the reason why you came out from a poor family. Mom say, oh, how I wish my parents are very rich. How I wish I was born in a very good home. The home where you came from is the best home for you. He knew everything about you. He doesn't allow anything without a purpose. God loves you. My viewers, wherever you are, Whatever you may be passing through, remember, for is good towards you. And it will never leave you in the name of Jesus. Everything will soon turn to the glory for you. You might be locked down somewhere because of the pandemic. And you say, oh, I'm in trouble now because of this lockdown. There's something good God wants to bring out from it. If there's nothing good he wants to bring down from it, he won't allow you to be locked down there. There is something. There is something. The end thereof shall be for God's glory. May the Lord bless you. I believe you are blessed through the word of God today. And I would like to encourage you to continue to connect to this daily message. And I believe that you will never regret in the name of Jesus. And don't forget our viewers. Don't make it tomorrow before you sow your seed. You might say, well, maybe next time, one day when, I'm, when I have enough, you don't know when Jesus will come back. Whatever you do for God now is what you get the reward in heaven. Do it now for the Lord. All you need to do, you have seen the link on our videos where you can commit yourself as a partner.
with just only two dollar click on it and make a registration as a partner and if ever you are in philippines that's make it very easy you can see the phone number there just go and buy a load of any amount to that number and send it as long as you do that that means you have so a seed for the work of god do according to whatever the spirit of god put to your heart it may be 20 it may be 100 it may be thousand let it be between you and god as i'm talking now i know that there's someone hearing me and the spirit of god is putting something to your heart to do you are hearing him silently talking to you the response to that obey him don't hold back because he will bless you he will reward you in the name of jesus god bless you i'm going to pray for you never forget the message today is this is to lead to the glory of god I have written you might be passing through. Don't let it affect you or make you upset. Don't put your mind or your eyes too much on your problem. But always let it be ring in your heart that this is for God's glory. This will lead to God's glory. This situation will end in God's glory. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I want to thank you. I give you praise for all the viewers. And thank you for everyone in the studio with us. Thank you for every member. Thank you for everyone that you have reached out to through this message. Lord, I commit them unto your hand. As I have delivered the one you have sent me. You know the situation of everybody. Whatever they might be passing through now. Somebody might be crying now. Somebody might be feeling pain now. Whatsoever things they may be passing through, any kind of agony, Lord, I ask for your intervention now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be miracle. Do great and mighty thing in their life. Lord, intervene, intervene, intervene. Heal that person that is the enemy now. Lord, do wonder. Bless that person in that area where she has been passing through lack and want, and it seems nobody can help her. Intervene, O oh Lord. Help that brother. Make a way. Meet that needs, O oh Lord Jesus. Show your mercy. Show your faithful. Let your grace speak in the life of everyone. Let there be testimony, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because you always answer us. We give you praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Don't forget, if you haven't given your life to Jesus as your Savior, make a decision now. Give your life to him. Invite him to come into your life. He's everywhere. He's in your home. Call him, Jesus, I love you. I want to surrender my life to you. Forgive me all my sin. You are my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Simple prayer as that. And God we surely forgive you and write your name in the book of life. The reason why you have to do that very urgent because nobody knows when the last trumpet of his coming will sound. It may sound in the next one minute to this time. Satan may not want you to do that. Do it now. That one, you don't need to pay any money to do it. Salvation is free. Just invite him and you will be saved. We love you. Jesus loves you. God bless you. Till I will see you again tomorrow. Don't forget, feel free to join us in the afternoon for other programs. Have a blessed day.